There is no greater joy than in serving the Beloved. Think on it, my dear, dear friends. I tell you, it has been the most solid truth that I've found to date in these magnificent realms of spirited life. I tell you that when one grows and accelerates, one seeks constantly to please the Beloved. The question, of course, arises, who is the Beloved? <clears throat> and I tell you, the truly Beloved <clears throat> is the one who most loves you. Yes, generally, you will find the Beloved ministering unto you, loving you completely. Oh, my dear friends, it is with great, great joy that I present myself here this day, <clears throat> working as best as we can, for I tell you that a squeaky instrument is better than none at all, and that much. I hold to be true. My dear friends, the question that arises this day is how is it that woman, man's, <clears throat> should we say, inner self, can be subject to so much that is tormenting her soul. Why should it be? If she, the reflection of your sweet celestial mother herself, I speak of every woman, if she is what she is, the reflection of sweetness, the reminder of love, how is it and why is it that she should be so tortured and beaten down? It must end, my dears. It shall end. And I am here to help in that ending and hopefully to bring about the beginning of something far more lovely than what we've been experiencing. It comes then to us all that we must understand this creature called woman and understand her we shall. For we must, you see. We are at that point where there'll be no further growth, not really, not spiritually, a very great advantage, but in fact, if we don't understand woman, we can't sweep her under the carpet any longer. We, all of us, men and women of course, must understand the woman within us all. And for those men who say, oh but I'm a man, how can I understand the woman within? Well, that becomes your quandary. That becomes your quest, dear brother. If you can't see that she's there, well, I should think it's time to turn about. For I tell you that it shall be salvation unto each soul through the window called woman. And that goes, of course, for our beloved brothers as well. So let us roll our sleeves up and begin, shall we? I'm here as a representative of beings far, far greater and more lovely than myself. And as such, I'm privileged to ask the questions they are asking. Not that they don't know the answers, believe me. 
but rather that they must, shall we say, catalyze the process of asking these things worldwide. The whole world must ask these questions and the whole world must have the answers. And so we begin. Why is it that woman seems to put man as the center of her universe so very often? In so asking, I imply no criticism, none. How could I? To be like, uh, what do they say in your world? Shooting myself in the foot. I'll not do it. But I would like to know why so very many ladies seem to think that the sun rises and sits upon her man and her whole life is about him. Again, dear ones, I say not that this is wrong nor right. I but pose the question. It begs an answer. Why is it that woman is so willing to suffer at the hands of an insensitive man or an insensitive family for far too long? What is it in her psychology that makes her so willing to endure? Is this a good thing? Obviously, it's got a purpose. The question, of course, is what is that purpose? And where does it begin and where does it end? And wherein lies the divine purpose behind that? We must have these answers, dear ones. Why is it that woman is so easily swayed by her man's, shall we say, intimidation tactics? As opposed to backing up a bit and saying, wait, what you're doing to me is quite unjust and furthermore, it would not seem to come from one that loves me. Why is it she so rarely does this thing and on the contrary is cowed, bowing her head and doing what the tyrant wants her to do? Changed all of it must be. And I say that the change must begin now. My dear friends, we must all understand the psychology, the feminine psychology, ere we can move one step further on the path of enlightenment. You who are women in this incarnation, most assuredly must come to know the answers to these questions, else, well, I'm afraid a whole life shall be lived in shadow. Sweet hearts. Oh, and I do love that word, kuu ipo, by the way. That lovely Hawaiian word, sweetheart. Each one of you must come to see the importance, the utter importance of understanding the feminine psychology. For in seeing this, we shall see the condition of all of humanity. Can't you see it? In other words, all of humanity will rise no further, nor can it, than that level where woman rises. And so you see, in some ways, she becomes the weak link in the chain. But why should she be? And why is she? And who has made her like that? And how can we undo it? That she become the strong one instead. Come to know, dear ones, that that thing called sex, the wonder that so many hold in such high regard, is 
also the very thing that is as a binding force to so many. Why should it be? Maybe analyze it. At the risk of sounding a bit, um, oh, flippant, I might add that in my time I knew what good sex was. And I'll tell you as I know it. Good sex, my dears, is sex without guilt of any kind. Oh, you want good sex, you say? Then I say seek out the guiltless right, eh? And you shall have it in spades. Yes, my dears. And so that sex that, shall we say, um, seems good, you know, the type that seems to overwhelm you. What a man, they say, what a stud, I believe is the word. Well, if in that union she is harmed in any way, or he is for that matter, or anyone is, it can't be good sex, not really. Touchy subject, I understand. Touchy indeed. But I tell you, my dears, oh, approximately 82%, I should estimate, of most of you listening, and those even who shall hear this message, have programmed the sexual experience into your lives that you might learn of it, that you might know its wonders, that you might finally come to see how lovely it can really be. And there it is, my dears, you want good sex. Then you must seek out that bed that holds no guilt and no shame. And then, as I say, my dears, you shall have it and enjoy it to the full. I did. Some of you might know that um, I chose to incarnate in the Taurus period of astrological influence. And, well, I suppose it's one of the most sensual signs of all. Some are saying, is it still going off on an odd direction? Not at all, my dears. I dare say it's most critical and central to the issue at hand. For I tell you that it is a point of record and observation from our point of view that it is this very thing that seems to ensnare and bond so many women to men who don't seem to be worthy of their graces. Why should she accommodate this one? And we find again and again that when she's uh, shall we say, a bit mesmerized by the sex. She says, oh, other things don't go well, but oh my, the sex. I tell you, my dears, here again, she's but delving into yet another blind spot. First, she thinks it's good sex, but of course, she's being damaged in the process. How can it be, by my definition? And if you look deeply, one day it shall become yours, I dare say. And of course, we find that She's but making associations. That's it. You see, um, association is a most dangerous thing. I shall explain it. She is associating certain sensations, certain emotional states, and not to mention the physical side of it all, that she's experiencing with certain inner processes within her psyche, within herself, that are quite cosmic, of course, having to do with, of course, the Kundalini energy and her own enlightenment. In other words, for at least 70% of you, you must have some sexual experiences 
to, shall we say, round out your characters. It isn't true of all, you understand. I'm not pontificating. But again, to continue. And so you see, this man who comes and perhaps is a bit agile, perhaps a bit skilled, some might say, in some form of the lovemaking process. And perhaps he's a sex technician, you know, we see some of these about. But that is it. He gives no heart, he gives no love, he gives no soul, really. On the contrary, he's giving little and take it all. He's a taker, my dears. And yet why is it she will swoon afterwards and do whatever he wills with dreamy eyes? Oh, I so love him, she says. I tell you she's associating the experience itself and him who seems to be the partner and she sees it as the generator with certain inner states that are doing her good but it's not being done properly. Which is why I return to my original point that good sex, we think, is guilt-free. Guilt-free in the sense that no one is being harmed and certainly not her. So let this be a bit of a criterion for you dears. Seek guilt-free sex and you shall have the best of all. Give it a bit of thought, you'll see that I'm right. To continue, each and every one of us must understand the feminine psychology more profoundly as to why she is what she is to gain knowledge, contact and access to the Divine Mother which is the rising force on this planet. In other words, if you're going to go where the planet is going, well, you've got to follow the leader of the prey, don't you? And I tell you, she is a she. Oh, my dear brothers, take no offense at this now. You're not suddenly reduced to second-class citizens, as some of you have done to women. Instead, you are invited to join the parade and to walk right up front, proud that as a man, you've got all the love of your woman. You can equal it and give it back to her. Now that's a man for you. As to bravado, as to the so-called machismo, as to sexual prowess, these things, well, one finds them in the animal kingdom. Really. What makes a man? I say a soul that is reminiscent of the great light of the Father. And he is the greatest giver of all. So, dear, dear brothers, give. Give, give. Give your love, not only your sex. And you'll find yourselves as the leaders of men and women. But again, there'll be no guilt involved, will there? It will be done righteously. Why is it that women insist upon trying to outdo one another? What is this one-upmanship that's been somehow sewn into the very fabric of their clothing? I detest it. Sweet sisters, it will take your effort daily to correct all of this. Oh, some say in protest, but we were not the ones that did it. Why should we have to be the ones that correct it? I should not be so quick to disavow your responsibilities. You've taken them on, haven't you? There's a reason for it. Dear ones, come to know this as well, that women must come to see other women as sacred creatures. 
sweet in the extreme and collectively the saviouries of the human race. This is my holding, this is my truth and certainly not mine alone but the truth of those that send me. Dear women, rise up my dears, refuse to see another woman as an enemy and you shall be aiding ever so much in this wondrous, wondrous campaign of love. We must correct it all. I am honoured as I notice what has not yet occurred. That is to say, I see the ranks of beautiful, beautiful women. Many of them Hawaiian women who have graciously honoured me with a lovely, lovely presence. They are here with us all as we are together. The lovely Mother Teresa is here and joins us and our sweet little Princess Diana is also here. The elegant Kavena Pukui graces us, as does her sweet and dear friend Iolani Luahini. We've got this lovely contingent of lovely Hawaiian souls. They are here. Edith Kanaka Ole as well. Nanavire adds to the light, as does the luminous Emma de Vries. The lovely Maiki Ayu Lake, Pele, Sukanuma, and many join us one after the other. Amongst these, my dears, your own sweet relatives, your mums, your grandmums, there be so very many. The list could go on and on and on. They all grace us with their presence. She who was once Norma Jean, Marilyn Monroe smiles demurely. There be so many here from all walks of life, so very many. Oh, I note your own lovely Jacqueline Bouvier Kennedy. Oh, look, two of those that raise their voices in song, interesting enough, sitting next to each other. The great Maria Callas, holding hands with Janis Joplin of all people. Now that's a pair for you. All these lovely ladies, and I've but mentioned a fraction, sit together. We are all as one family, and there'll be more and more as they file in. For though Earth time, is not available to cover this entire topic adequately. I tell you, my dears, it shall go on. We shall sit here and expand 
our knowledge of each other. For you see, this is why they're all here. Each one telepathically contributing her light, her knowledge, her experience. Each one has taken the time and trouble to investigate why she hath done what she has done, you see. And so together, we collectively are solving these problems. Why is it that women can fall in love with yet another woman, irregardless of the sexual aspects of the relationship? And not usually be mistreated the way she is all too often when she cohabitates with her man. It can't be, dear ones. Could it be that women must interact with each other a bit more? I think so. Let us solve our own conundrum and quandary. Let us keep our minds on these matters. And dear ones, for those of you who sit there rather smugly and say, oh, those things don't apply to me really. I'm happily married. I've got no guilt. I enjoy sex and things are quite lovely. I tell you, dear, not as long as your sister is suffering. They're not lovely at all. Or your version of lovely, I'm afraid is rather partial. The loveliest vision of all is when all of us together understand these things. And again, you say, but if I've figured them out, well, at least to the point of living happily, what then can I do? That's more like it, sister. You can seek out the ones that don't understand it yet. If indeed you are that adept at joy and happiness, then certainly you can teach and share your grace. But your job is not done till I can't hear one woman crying on the planet. The Divine Mother herself would have it so. Oh, how I love you all. And you brothers who are listening, please don't think for a second that we, women, don't love you utterly. We seek simply to understand ourselves and yourself that we might love you yet more beautifully, with no guilt and full bliss, that there be love indeed that there be the real appearance of that love that we've all known, else we would not know what to seek at all. A kiss to each one, blessings on your heads, how very much we all love you. You've no idea. But contemplate that as well, if you will, for that indeed we leave you with and never is it removed. We extend our hands in spirit to you and look, all the women are doing it. Won't you take them? Dear ones, take an ally, someone you know is in spirit, a sister, one that you admire, that you respect, that you love. Take her hand now in your mind and in your hearts. And we've breached the gap and there is no death, as I've said a thousand times. And only life and love prevails. Oh, how lovely is love. Understood, shared, multiplied, and then given to the youth that they never have to pass through the nightmare we are ending. God bless you all. How I love you. How very much I do. 
I am your sweet reminder, if I might so say, that you are loved, so loved, so loved. Your mother loves you dearly.